This exploit is no doubt the fastest way to level gold horrors in Season 11, at least until it's patched. Before I start, I would like to say that I have seen a few videos on this, but I don't know who the original founder is, so if you know who the original founder is, please comment so I can give credit where it is due, and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy. This uh, exploit uses the updated Gold Hoarder Vault. For some reason when they updated this for Season 11, they completely broke the logic for how the keys and maps work. The first step of the map is to head to Cinder Island. In the Devil's Rule. Once you're here, vote for an Ashen Vault. Now, I've personally only tested the higher tier ones, but I think it works for both. After voting for your quest, pull out the Wayfinder, and give it a second to load in the quest and let it actually start, and once it gets its bearing, see if where it's pointing. There are two possibilities for where it could be pointing for that first map piece. It will either be on the island where you are, and it will be vibrating back and forth, even if you're on your ship still, or it won't be doing that. If it isn't doing that, if it is not vibrating, on the island you are currently on, you are ready for the next step. If it is vibrating, cancel and revote for the quest. You may have to do this a few times or even dig it up before resetting. Okay, so now you're on Cinder Islet. Your Wayfinder is not pointing towards the island you're currently on. It's not shaking. The map piece is not on that island. Now, for some reason, when you are here starting the quest and there is no map piece here, the game decides that that is where the key is going. So because of this, you can just start digging on this island. And from my experience, 100% of the time that you do this, you will get the key. Now you have to dig around a bit, and you'll have to try different areas, and you know it'll, it might take a minute, but the more people you have, the more likely you are to find the key quickly. So like, yeah, like I said, after you get this done, it's not on that island, just start digging. Start digging all around the island, and you have a 100% chance, from my experience, that the key chest is on that island. And once again, the more people you have that can do this, we did it with a brigantine, we tried it with a sloop, I tried it solo, the more people you have, it goes way quicker, because you got more digs going per minute. Now, once you find the key, dig it up, put it on your ship, and you can rinse and repeat this method as many times as you would like and get unlimited keys. But, do you want to sell the keys? Or actually do the vaults? What are the risks? And what other things can you do to maximize the profit? Well, let me tell you. First, we tried it out to see. Doing the vaults, actually putting the key in and doing them, nets you almost 10 times more gold and reputation. However, it can take way more time and it is pretty risky. And also, but the more people you have, the quicker that will be as well, because you gotta carry all the chests up and stuff. Now we will showcase the risks, trust me. If you are solo, I do not recommend doing more than three volts at a time, as carrying that many chests is torture. Obviously you can do how many you like, but there's no, not really a reason to. In the time it takes, I'm sure you will get rolled up on, and you have a very high chance and get all your loot stolen for no reason. So I would definitely, if you're solo or even a duo, do this in small groups. However, if you have a bigger crew, I guess you can stack as many as you'd like. Just be ready to defend it and for the time that it would take. We spent an hour and got 24 volt keys. And we did 12 of the volts and sold 12 of the keys just to show you guys the numbers and so you can judge which is better for you and your current play session. In our play session doing this, we also got to show the dangers and how to escape those dangers and what to do to prepare for those dangers, that way you can get out of them quickly. Here is a demo of the method so you guys can see both how it works, how efficient the method is, as well as how it really works in practice, extra tips, and extra tips for you to utilize, so sit back and enjoy. First, we voted for the Shores of Gold Tall Tale to get us to Marrow's Peak Outpost because we spawned at Sanctuary and that's the quickest way to get there. Here we stocked up on resources and decided to head towards Cinder Islet. Now, we started with two people on the brigantine because we were waiting for a friend to join, and it was taking about one to two minutes per key on average. After our third friend joined us, it took about a minute and sometimes less. Sometimes we even got it on first dig, so it's pretty easy. I will note that there are different paths you can take that are more efficient, and I will show those. Remember, you only have to dig in a general area. So here's the path that I normally take when we start digging, and obviously it can be in different places, but you only have to be in the general area. So these are areas, this path gives you most of the areas that are generally covered. And if you don't find it here, just keep digging around the island, you will find it. After an hour, we had actually dug up 25 keys. Somehow we lost one somewhere, but that's fine because that made it even. After we had our 24 keys, we started to head towards Fetcher's Rest, which by the way, all of the vault keys will always go to this same island because of the key preference, which is a thing added in a previous season that allows the key to be closest to the island that it is dug up near. So it will always be there. We tried our best to park in a spot where we could harpoon, but also get out in case of a fight. 
See, Fetris Rest, you kind of have to go in this little area, and the bigger ship you have, the harder it is to get in here, and the harder it is to get out. You can speed up the loading process with a harpoon rowboat in a multitude of ways. Just be careful as they're a little buggy. After you get a lot of loot or entities loaded into them at once, they can start to bug out a little bit, so just be aware of that. At this point, we just started grinding out our vaults with pretty much no incident, actually. Even the island didn't erupt, which was really amazing. We were just taking turns carrying chests up, finishing the vaults, and saying that it gets 10 times as much is also a judgment of saying that we got almost everything out of these vaults, including the trinkets. But as we finished the 12th vault and started loading most of the stuff under our ship, which like I said, we had been loading throughout the time, but we still had quite a bit left, probably three or four vaults, I noticed a Reaper's 5 headed straight for us from the other side of the map. And in almost no time, it was time for us to go. We had to get out of there. This is the main risk. Other people being able to see you, you're sitting here for so long, and if they're Reaper's 5, they probably know what you're doing and they can definitely see you on the map. So if they know about this or they even just know that there's a vault there, they will probably start heading towards you. As they got closer, we had a plan though, and this is how I recommend that you guys escape it, though I have a slightly better way to do it. Me and Jackson left with what we had on the boat and Nathan tried to carry as much out of the vault as he could as if he needed to come back to the ship as soon as he comes back, those second set of doors will close and we will not be able to get down there, locking our loot away until we get another key to put it to get back down there, and even then it could despawn. We headed towards Marrow's Peak, but that brigantine was gaining on us quick, and they were shooting people off there, trying to shoot chain shots. They were trying anything they could to get us down, and when, though we were down a man, we were about to be down two, so we could not even turn to fight them. We realized there was no time to sell, and I came up with a different plan. Let's escape to the Shores of Gold. This was going to take a few steps though. In order to escape to the Shores of Gold, me and Jackson needed to vote for the Tall Tale. After voting, we had to have someone talk to Grace at Marrow's Peak. So we started heading there because we were almost there anyways. As I got there, I realized that it wasn't doing anything and all of a sudden I saw a message pop up that said all of our crew had to be there at the same time and we all lost hope as we were getting shot at by this Reaper's 5 Brigantine. However, as soon as Nathan came back to the boat, the game considered us all together. Nathan came back to just help us, but as soon as it considered us all together, it started the Shores of Gold, gave us the Shroud Breaker, and we could head north to escape into the Red Sea. Now, I feel like this is worth mentioning. We would normally try and take on this fight, but we were almost out of food and we did not have a huge amount of cannonballs or planks, and we were so nervous for losing this loot, we just had to get out. As well as these players seemed pretty good. As we headed north, not only was a Reaper's 5 Brigantine on our tail, but there was also a four-stacked player galleon, a skeleton galleon, and a megalodon. If we could actually make it out of this, it would be insane. As we closed in on the Red Sea, the shores of gold, and safety, they downed both of our masts, dropped our anchor, and got someone on board, all within a minute. Oh, he's on, he's on. Shit. Hey, what's... He's weak. God damn. He is weak. What are you? Oh, what's that eating? Oh shit, we're gonna get burnt, thank you. He just disappeared from me. He's a blood act. Okay. We need bucket right, right now. Yep. Where's he at? Blood act. Kill him. Bucket, 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 bucket. Yeah, I know. Working on it. Fucking Skelly Pierce. Holy Jackson, shit. let me get back masked up. Yep, got you. And Nathan, keep bucketing. I'm repping. Jesus. Fix it. Alright. It's on us. It's fine. Okay, drop it, drop, drop. I'm dropping mask. Let me kill. Please don't drop this. Where's our bearing? Which direction are we going? Oh, we're fine. We had been insanely close to sinking, but after defending against the border, chain shots, and anchor drops, we were repaired and moving again. I was able to catch the anchor, they were able to take care of the border, and I was able to get our front mast up and moving. And while Nathan repaired, me and Jackson did the back mast and got us moving at full speed. At last, we finally made it to the Red Sea. Now, they sent a couple Hail Mary cannonballs, but and they actually hit one of them, but they had to turn around due to the Red Sea. They just couldn't do it out there. We were safe, and GG to these guys, because they almost got us, and they were extremely well tactic and, and trying to chase us down, but we just had to run with the loot we had. Now, we still had to make it to an outpost and sell, and maybe even recover our unloaded loot that was still at Betcher's Rest. We had one very bad misconception, especially me, though. We had thought from previous experiences that we would switch sessions when we went to the Shores of Gold. 
but that is not how it works anymore. They were right outside the border of the Red Sea waiting for us to come back. Well, while we waited to see what they would do, we decided to go ahead and set up a screenshot and separate all of our loot to see what we had, and this is what it looked like, which was pretty badass. After getting our screenshot and we started to set everything back into its piles, we got our chance. The galleon that had been previously in the fray, the player galleon, had come back and finished the brigantine off. This galleon was not Reapers 5, so they could not see where we went. Also, they had a Reapers chest on board, so we could see where they were at and make our plan based off of that. We ended up deciding that it was safe after a lot of talks to sell at Galleon's Grave Outpost, which is obviously the most dangerous one from where we were just at. But the galleon was headed away from us and the Devil's Roar, so that's where we went. We sold the 12 keys we had remaining. Getting those 12, those first 12 keys took 30 minutes. It gave us 119,568 gold, meaning that if you did that for a straight hour, you'd get about 220,740 gold per hour. We also got two and a half levels from this, meaning that you would get about five levels per hour. Now, I know that doesn't sound super extraordinary, but that's not with the vaults. That's the technically safe way of doing this exploit. So remember, we'll get to the vaults. After selling, it was time to go back and see if we could reclaim the rest of our loot and count up the total vault loot, but we could have never guessed what was going to be waiting there for us. As we approached the island, it was extremely foggy, and right as we pulled up. The bass drum, whenever it hits the next level, yeah. just boom, 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 boom. There's a, there's boom, a sloop here, boom. there's a sloop here. Wait, what? Drop anchor, drop anchor, drop anchor, drop anchor, drop anchor. Okay. Oh, they might be trying to get our shit. Right. I'm going. Dude, they can't see us because of the shroud. Let's just go sneak up on them. Okay. I have pineapple, okay. Oh, I see, they're gold number five. Yeah, no shoot. Their, their vault just filled up. They're doing vaults too. <gasps> Look at the shark! Yo, they, they have all our shit. They have all our shit. Okay. There's a keg. Keg, keg in the ship. Their boat's loaded. Keg their ship. Remember that keg you said to drop? Yeah. yeah Dude, they did all that heavy fucking work for us. Yeah, they have king's chests and stuff too. Blowing it. Kindness. Yes, someone else was not only trying to take our loot, load it up, which why wouldn't you if you just found that on an island, but they had done a few more vaults. We think it was one or two, but they could have done more than that. We have no way to be sure, but that's how many tribute chests we found, so that's what we're assuming. They had also reopened the vault, meaning that everything that we thought would be stuck down below, we now had access to, all of our trinkets, everything that we thought we had lost, so we were going to be able to do a perfect full count, maybe including their things as well, but just to get a general idea, we would actually know how well we did. While loading, they came back one time, they shot us, and then asked why we wouldn't trust them to Alliance, so safe to say we took care of them, and we were finally able to go sell. After selling at Marrow's Peak Outpost, we gained a total of 931,226 gold, and about 20 levels, just from the chests. Add the keys on top of that, we made over a million gold, as well as about 23 levels. Here are the complete stats from our journey. The time to complete the 12 volts, just complete the puzzle parts and get all the chests out, was an hour and 22 minutes. The time to get 24 keys was an hour and 5 minutes. So you get about double the amount of keys as you can faults done, and that does not count the time carrying, loading, all that kind of stuff, because obviously that varies per crew. The total gold from the chest was 931,226, and the total reputation from the 12 volts was 20 levels. The gold per hour from the vaults is 681,384, and the reputation per hour from actually completing the vaults was 14.6 levels per hour. As I said, this does not count any of the sailing time, digging up the keys, which the 12 keys for those vaults took about 30, minute, 30 extra minutes to get, but we already had them so we couldn't really count that time. And I will also say, our total voyage was exactly 5 hours. Because of how long it took to load the chest, running to the shores of gold, coming back for the rest of our chest, dealing with another sloop, and then selling again, it took a, quite a bit longer than obviously we say. So just remember to allocate more time than you think things are going to take, as it is extremely likely things will go wrong, off track, or you will get distracted or interrupted. Whether it's by players, glitches, bugs, or eruptions even, something will probably happen. For an extra layer of protection, after getting all the keys that you're going to use for the vaults, go start your Shores of Gold Tall Tale, that way you can just go straight north if someone starts to roll up on you and you can get away from Fetcher's Rest. 
And if you guys found this video enjoyable, entertaining, or informational, please let me know. And if there's any ways that you guys think that we can make this exploit more efficient, please let me know so that everyone else in the comments and myself can use it to our advantage. No matter how small the tip is, we will try it and we will figure out if it is more efficient. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.